Hello, I'm Quinn Owens here. Now, we're here at the Model Club, specifically Southland Society of Model Engineers, my local club, and sorry if I'm a bit blah blah blah, blah tonight, because it, it's quite cold. <laughs> I'd say cold enough to freeze the pond, but yeah. Now, this is going to be a review video, and it's uh, like the last time I did a sort of intro like this, it's going to be narrow gauge. Batman narrow gauge again, because they seem to be the lead in uh, 009 locomotives. Whether it's based on a real locomotive or a Thomas product, and believe me, I've checked. This one, double fairly. Let's have a look, shall we? Now, it's been a while since I've done an intro and straight to unboxing without any cuts, so. Bear with me. Okay, here we go. What we have here is Liverston Thompson in the Festinial Railway lined maroon. And I actually didn't realize this until about an hour or two ago. Um, this locomotive here is the one that's in the National Collection in New York. <laughs> I kid you not, I actually had to double check that. So, let's just open her up. Classic uh, ice cube. Let's just carefully pull the sleeve off, which is quite tight. <laughs> okay, details. What are we on the detail pack? Oh, just some very, very fine etch plates. That's beautiful. Now, collector's club thing, I think that is. And this is just a genuine, genuine uh, maintenance shape in color. I love that. Oh, it opens. Sweet. Sweet. Oh, and here we have for DCC fitting and on this page the variations you can get four variations for four different well I was going to say four different eras but three of them are era two so it's just the three uh, four different locos Livingston Thompson era two Earl Money of Marionoff is an era six Merton Emery's is both era twos, as built and Edwardian era. Hmm. Okay, I actually did not know you could get Merton Emery. You could get one locomotive in two versions. I actually did not know that. Hmm. Okay, now let's have a look at the little devil. And little is right. Look at that. Now I just got a. There we go. Because last time I did this was with my uh, Welsh Highland Baldwin. And the sleeve came out. Ah, off it again. And the sleeve stuck in the box again. Lovely. I'm just, I'm just curious now because, hang on. That is small, short compared to the Baldwin. Oh my gosh. And you think I'm doing this, you know, side foot back view and that. I'm not kidding. Look at that. Great height difference. Great width difference. Whoa. That is... I'm actually surprised by that. I actually am surprised. <laughs> oh my goodness. But then again, the Festiniog did have uh, very severe clearances in its early years. And I'm not kidding, um, doors were very much locked between stations on the Festiniog. So, yeah, that's a bit of a bugger, ain't it? Alright, put the board one away, because we've already reviewed that. And it's a great logo, I love it. Alright, now for the... Let's have a look at the details on this. Got a beautiful coal bunker, the cab detail alone is impeccable. So much separately fitted detail on this is brilliant. I love it. Cylinders, the lining. I just love it already. And I haven't even ran it yet. This is brilliant. I just. I very rarely fall in love with a locomotive before I run it. This stuff, I mean. Oh, I mean, it's beautiful. 
I have no issues with the detail, none at all. It's, it's just brilliant. Wow. Beautiful. It's not often I'm quiet about a locomotive's detail. Normally I have one or two nitpicks, but this is just... I'm speechless for once. I'm speechless. Okay, let's get it on the track and see how it does. Okay, we have the double fairly on the test track, and the one night I forget my tripod, so I'm holding the camera by hand. Let's get on the go. One thing I should note about this test track, as soon as you just cr turn it slightly on, any locomotive that isn't trying, it just goes like a bat out of hell. I'm not even kidding. Watch. Just making sure it's set for correctly. Because, trying control, Martlin control, DCC, DC controls, and very simple. That's the digital control. The Martlin controls for up here. Okay, three, two, one. If that's the top speed, I love it. And I'm not even kidding, all you have to do is just slightly cramp the control on this and Okay, I'm just loving this looking move. Let's see how much it can pull. Now, to be fair and give it a good solid chance, I'm going to run this locomotive on the club's end scale layout. Not on the 009 because that's currently going under renovation. Fair enough. But I'm also going to see how long a train this can pull. Or how long a train I can do before the rolling stock derails. <laughs> Let's see what happens first. Okay, here we have the double fairly Livingston Thompson on the end scale layout with quite possibly the longest train I have ever had on this layout. <laughs> I'm not even kidding when I say that. How it will handle the dip on one of the corners, I have no idea. But, let's see how it does with this mighty load. And that's full speed right there. And... If my camera assistant can please, I forgot my tripod, but I finally got someone very nice to help with filming tonight. To just quickly look at the control to see that, yep, full speed. <laughs> and I lost part of the train already. Oh no. <laughs> Don't you start laughing. No, no, keep going. I like keeping these goofs in just for kicks and gigs. Shows a bit of entertainment in it. Right. I'm just caught. Since I know the Baldwin fits through the tunnels, this is going to have absolutely no trouble. It's slimmer and shorter than the Baldwin. But it's a lot longer, so... Hmm. However, this is just a mean piece of kit. What do you think, man? Is it a good loco? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the fact it's nice and silent, that's one thing. Mm-hmm.
Now here's the troublesome bit. Let's see if the double fairly lives to its real counterpart strength. And the answer, ladies and gentlemen, is... Actually, does it? Oh, I don't freaking believe it. Really? <laughs> Holy... I'm not sure I can get away with it to, just to piss off the copper program. Holy shit. It actually made it. I had to take trucks off for the Baldwin to go around. This, though, it just powers on. <laughs> Holy, just like with the 9F, Barkman have cracked the double fairly to get the power. I don't believe it. It makes the loop. I mean, this did cost me 400 New Zealand dollars. One of my most expensive locos considering its size. And... And after seeing that, totally worth the money. Totally worth the money. Because that dip, it screws over in N-scale locomotives, which are made to take long trains. I'm not even joking, but a couple of weeks back, it screwed over two diesel locomotives, double heading the train the same length as this. So... <laughs> that is just... Oh man, I'm, I'm stunned. I'm never going to run passenger coaches on this layout though, because the running boards always knock on the scenery. What do you expect? It's made for N-scale, not for narrow gauge. Unlike with my 9Fs, I'm not going to try and see if it does a standing start from the drip. Because I saw a heck of a lot of slip going just as it crossed the hill. And I'd say currently tonight it's about a couple of degrees above zero, would you agree? Yeah, I'd say so. Hence why I'm wearing a ski mask. Normally I can take the cold on, no sweat, but tonight, bugger that, it's like a chiller in here. Got a lot of gauge master controls. Okay, and before anyone comments about the mask, it is because it's a freaking cold night. But thoughts on the double fairly, fantastic. Actually, hang on, so you can hear me. Thoughts on the double fairly, fantastic locomotive. It is, it is really one of the best double unknown locomotives out there. And also, it means for locomotives in double nine. I'm either going to go with 3D printed kits like I've had in the past, or stick with Bachman. Unless Helgen all of a sudden up their game on their locomotives, because let's be fair, you see so many on Hattons that are poor runners, busted up, damaged, it's not funny. So unless they really up their game on the 009 scene, uh, I'm never going to buy from them, ever. Unless they do a diesel, because apparently Helgen diesels are top grade. The locomotives, <laughs> junk. But, yeah. 
definitely get yourselves a double fairly if you're modeling 009. If you don't, get one anyways, they're great. And they fit perfectly inside an Oxford Rail Pilchard wagon. I found that out for a laugh. All right, since it's getting colder, and I think before the pond freezes over, <laughs> this is up well and onwards, frosty fingers, saying, <laughs> see ya, take care of yourself, and as for copper,